I know that everybody is excited about the inauguration, all the prizes won and all. So, uh, sorry, I, it's, uh, I have a flight to catch, so I have to deliver this talk and run. In fact, I'm in running shoes, you know, so once I finish, I'm going to run to the airport to catch the flight. Okay, hi. So, uh, today we want to talk about endometriosis and what is this fertility issue gone with the wind. I think uh, there are a lot of changing concepts in endometriosis which we need to understand and that is what I'm going to talk about. And uh, the whole thing is, we all know endometriosis means what? Loss of follicular pool, declining quality of the oocyte and reducing endometrial receptivity. These are the things that happen with endometriosis. And the loss of the follicular pool is probably because of focal inflammation that happens in endometriomas. There is structural de uh, destruction of the normal endometrium that is there. Because of all these changes, there's enhanced recruitment and atresia. And that affects the growing follicles. And this results in a burnout. So burnout means what there's drop in AMH and dysregulation of ovulogenesis. And we all know that this meta-analysis, which was published in 2018, 17 studies, 1,000 patients of endometriosis, 2,000 patients of non-endometriosis. And it actually showed that ovaries which had endometrioma, compared to healthy ovaries, AMH was much lower. Even compared to cysts like uh, B9 dermoid cysts, B9 cyst endomas, the AMH was reduced. So endometriosis itself reduces uh, the ovarian reserve and even surgery also reduces the ovarian reserve. Sometimes we do surgery that time we do excessive stripping of the ovarian cortex, co use of coagulation to stop the bleeding and the presence of surgically induced inflammation. All these can cause it and in fact when there are bilateral ovarian cysts, the failure rate is as high as 2.4% when even the surgery is done very, very well. So this meta-analysis and a systemic review says that ovarian cystectomy for endometrioma seems to cause a significant damage to the ovarian uh, reserve, as much as 40% fall in the ovarian reserve due to cystectomy. Then the declining quality of the oocyte there is increased apoptosis, there is decreased expression of P450 aromatase, there is increased oxidative stress in the follicle fluid and all this causes mitochondrial damage and this results in spindle abnormalities and spindle abnormalities obviously impaired fertilization and less pregnancy rates. This definitely reduced endometrial receptivity because endometriosis causes progesterone resistance also. So there's luteal phase dysfunction and other autoantibodies uh, which can cause endometrial dysfunction. So gone with the wind, what does my topic mean? Endometriosis effect on ART. There was a very, this is by Paul Pertia, he was, resp uh, you know, writing an article responding to, a, uh, to one of the published studies by Bishop et al. in the same journal, Feb 21, Fertility Sterility. Bishop studied 1,000 patients where he did embryo biopsy of endometrioma patients and a main factor in fertility patients. And he compared the results of both the patients and he realized that the euploid embryos, that means the normal embryos, were the same in endometriosis and non-endometriosis patients. Means what? Naturally, the success rate is lower, but if you use IVF, the success rate definitely is kind of similar because the success rates are similar. The euploid embryo rate is similar. And why this has occurred, we'll definitely learn as we go along my talk. So how do we manage? How do we get the best results in a patient of endometriosis? <clears throat> and we get uh, fantastic. So what is important is to remember is her AMH, her desire for pregnancy, the symptoms, the age, previous surgery, the volume, the size of the endometrioma, etc. All these factors are important. So how do we protect fertility? I think the important factor that you must remember is prevention. Prevention is very important in endometriosis. 
So you have a young unmarried girl. So early diagnosis is important. You know, diagnosis of endometriosis takes 10 years and five gynecologists. Because this girl who has dysmenorrhea goes from one doctor to get the other undiagnosed. So I think it's very important that early diagnosis. Suppress the therapy when the cyst is less than 3 centimeters. You can use progestins, you can use OCP, GnRH analogs. Normally we don't use it. And follow up. <clears throat> I think if you have a young girl with endometriosis, endometrioma or even just endometriosis, do six monthly uh, sonographies. Follow her up at least yearly. Keep her on OC pills. Follow up. Talk to the patient. Keep her on progesterone. Progesterone have been proven. Even Dynogest is something that I'm very comfortable with. I used it for five years uh, together. Oral contraceptive pills, you can give it for even 10 years. We know the safety of profile of these drugs and there's no problem. So protect this girl from the disease and you will get better drugs, better results. Now there is something called progesterone resistance which I talked about in um, endometriosis. And there, these are the oral antagonist drugs which are available. They are approved by the US FDA and soon they will be available in India. These are oral uh, uh, GnRH antagonists, Elagolix, Linzagolix and Velugolix and these can be used. OC is the first choice but if the patient does not respond to that, you can use these drugs. <clears throat> If the cyst size is more than 3 centimeters, but in a young girl, I would go to say that if she has no pain and even the cyst is 4 centimeters, I would still pull her on. 5 centimeters, I would still pull her on. Unless she has some pain or something, I would give her medical therapy, try and suppress her, uh, you know, do it. If you are doing surgery, then obviously microsurgical techniques microsurgical principles need to be followed and uh, you need to weigh the benefits of surgery vis-a-vis -vis the benefits of medical therapy and also at the same time counsel her for fertility preservation. Bilateral big endometriomas, uh, ethanol washing is coming in a big way. Uh, if there's a beautiful article if anybody wants to read, is it prime time? for ethanol washing. I love the name, you know, like we talk about prime time on ZTV, on, uh, you know, all our channels, 8 p.m. is prime time. So this particular article, is it prime time for it? So I think uh, I was talking to Sandesh Kade, in fact, and he is uh, publishing uh, a paper along with a person who's abroad, where they're doing, where they do laparoscopic surgery. And during the laparoscopic surgery of the endometrioma, they are doing ethanol washing and then removing the ethanol and, uh, a GI, and they're going to publish the study. He told me that he's going to publish the study soon. So I think there are so many things that are coming up. So ethanol washing, oocyte cryopreservation is something that you should offer. Even ovarian tissue cryopreservation. You know, Vivek is going to talk about TLH. If it's a young girl, please freeze her ovaries. There's no harm in freezing her ovaries. Today, ovarian tissue freezing is not experimental, so please do it. Oocyte petrification, Anna Kobo into 2021 May, her beautiful article on uh, oocyte freezing where, uh, where endometriosis and cancer uh, patients close their eggs <clears throat> and she's shown fantastic results. But remember, if the patient is younger than 35 years, 10 to 15 eggs would definitely give a clinical life birth rate of 40 to 70 percent. The older you get, you need more uh, eggs. But remember, it is skill. The egg freezing is a skillful process and it needs a lot of, uh, you know, uh, effort into it. And uh, uh, the embryologist has to really be good. Now let's come to the adult married women who are not desiring pregnancy. Reproductive planning should be chatted with her. She should be put on oral contraceptives or progesterone. And she should be talked about embryo freezing for fertility planning. Then recommendations of surgical treatment. This was a beautiful uh, recommendations by Ashley. The whole committee came up with it. It's the same what I taught you said before, that microsurgical principles. 
handle the ovarian tissue, atraumatic uh, damage to the ovarian reserve is definitely going to happen. So please do the EMH before and after the surgery. Fertility preservation should be considered and new site or embryo cryo preservation before surgery and ovarian tissue cryo preservation if required during the surgery. So combined ablation and cystectomy, this was a beautiful technique demonstrated by Donay in I think 2009, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, that's written, 2009, where he uh, did cystectomy and near the hilum, with this concentration of the follicles, he did laser only fulguration. <clears throat> and the damage was really less and that time he did of course the ovarian volume and follicle count six months after surgery and they were the same following this treatment and the recurrence rate was not as high. So I think a combination technique would be good. Cystectomy with vasopressin can also be done and I think mechanical, uh, no I think I'm okay, thank you, thank you for being so sweet. Uh, mechanical compression rather than cautery should be used for taking care of the uh, for hemostasis. Uh, recurrent endometriomas. Recurrent endometriomas, see point number four, avoidance of repeat surgery. You should not do. You should rather do IVF or freeze your eggs and embryos before doing recurrent endometriosis surgery. Definitely get her pregnant before that because the recurrent endometrioma, 13% of the cases in this particular study have been uh, told to do uh, freezing. Then how to improve fertility. Now, how, a lot of uh, endoscopist uh, surgeons come and say, oh, my patient conceived naturally after laparoscopy. Yes, but yeah, not everybody does it. It's very important to do this endometriosis fertility index. If you're doing laparoscopy, do the score. If your score is less than four, that woman has less than 20% chance of spontaneous conception. Please do not do it in her life. Be uh, scientific, be uh, evidence-based and do it properly. We are not objecting to that. So do it properly and uh, get results. And finally, at the end of it, we all want a baby. It's not by IVF or by endoscopy or whatever, even simply by giving tablets. We want a baby at the end of it. <clears throat> Treatment of stage 1 and stage 2 is IUI, definitely the pregnancy rates are increased and it is the treatment. Treatment of stage 3, stage 4, surgery or IVF, actually the jury is out. You have to decide and I think it depends on the surgeon, it depends on the IVF unit, what they are very comfortable with and most of all I think it depends on the AMH. If the AMH is poor, there is no question I will go for IVF. If the AMH is good, the age is young, I may still go for surgery before that. But uh, with this latest research that has come out that uh, you know IVF is the answer for endometriosis grade 3, grade 4, I think uh, mindset of the people is changing and <clears throat> the point is that we need to give her a baby. So you need to think, so maybe you can preserve her fertility go for surgery after that and then leave her alone for some time. So she has the backup of using her embryos if at all she needs them and doesn't conceive spontaneously. The surgery is definitely going to cause a dip in her uh, ovarian reserve. Expectant management is definitely recommended in older women, poor ovarian reserve, bilateral endometriomas and prior surgical treatment. <clears throat> Recurrent endometriomas, Pregnancy rate is half of that of primary surgery. So definitely ART is better than primary surgery. And uh, Rasha Velasco have really given, when would you do surgery? Rapid growth, because that is a sign of uh, cancer. Suspicious features noted on ultrasound, pain attributed to the mass, potential for rupture during pregnancy, inability to access follicles in the normal ovarian reserve, and more than three centimeters and bilateral. Now this is very contradictory what I'm saying, but here the other the part where you can aspirate the endometrioma, which I'm going to talk about, comes in. So in my ART clinic, what do I do? GNRH, analog, pre-treatment, no, I don't use it, but it has been recommended and a lot of units have found it useful. GNRH analog with aromatase inhibitor pre-treatment, yes, GNRH analog with letrozole has been recommended. 
OCP treatment is something that I use regularly. Dopamin Egon is pain treatment. I use it a lot. I use Capricoline. Uh, a lot of times people are trying naturally, so we do use a lot of Capricoline. And frozen thyroid transfer, that is my norm for endometriosis. So, <clears throat> GNRH agonist during the luteal phase, the meta-analysis shows that the pregnancy rates are doubled. So definitely use it during the luteal phase and you will get good results. And even uh, this particular one where uh, GNRH analog is used for luteal phase support. It's a wonderful drug and it can be used. This is what I wanted to talk to you about. Ethanol sclerotherapy ready for endometrial uh, for prime time. So this was a beautiful uh, article. It's a video article actually, and uh, they give ten basic steps. <coughs> Surgical planning, MRIs. You know how they are over there. They, but I think a good sonography would be good. Seventeen gauge needle. Aspirate the cyst completely. Inject uh, the cyst two to three times. Until, uh, flush the cyst with saline two to three times till the clear fluid is obtained. The 96% ethanol solution is injected at 60% of the cyst volume. Leave the ethanol for 10 minutes because if you remove it immediately, the recurrence rate is as high as 70%. So it's important to remove it. I mean, keep it for 10 minutes and then remove the ethanol completely. Don't leave any ethanol inside because you'll have peritoneal. The peritonitis, chemical peritonitis. See that your patient is under, your anesthetist should see that the patient doesn't move when you're instilling ethanol so that it doesn't spin. And your cyst volume should be 2 cc at a 20, less than 20% when you exit out of that uh, endometrioma. And um, of course, vaginal antibiotic, a vaginal prophylactic antibiotic cleansing, use a beta D or something, an IV antibiotic should be given in this patient. And send that fluid for cytology, definitely. So this is what it is, an uh, ideal patients to include, poor surgical candidates, uh, decreased ovarian reserve, previous surgery with UR. So I think it's for very select patients. You can't do it for left, right, and center for everybody. So contraceptives in women with endometriosis before ART, definitely the outcomes uh, are improved and double the success rate. Then this uh, new protocol, which I have now, but I have not used it, but I really want to because I think it's amazing. Progesterone prime ovarian stimulation protocol because progesterone is going to reduce the incident, flaring up of the endometriosis. And in endometriosis, we know that deferred embryo transfer, that is frozen embryo transfer, will give you a better pregnancy rate. So definitely this protocol will work beautifully. And you can see that even in this uh, uh, you know, study, the pain is taken care of. So there's absolutely no pain when you're stimulating the patient. So it's a wonderful protocol, especially for endometriosis patient. And look at this, Dynagest with Capricornine, the last picture, the endometriotic deposits are all clear. So it's a wonderful combination. And of course, this is in mice, which they have done studies and they're doing it. Then outcomes in fresh and frozen. And you can see that the outcomes are doubled in frozen embryo transfer. Because I told you, in the endometrial dysfunction is taken care of when we give GnRH analog to the patient. And that is why it's important when you're getting a patient pregnant naturally, either give her a progesterone or an OC pill to control that, to correct that aspect. So what is it, why has it gone with the wind? Because of the advances in the laboratory. The GnRH analog is a wonderful drug. The progesterone is a fantastic drug. Uh, Cabergoline, another fabulous drug. So the medias which have come, the culture, techniques, growing them to blastosis, benchtop incubators, because you have single incubators per person. So it's giving you superb results. Poloscope, because there's no spinal damage. See, even if you get less eggs, which are those which are good eggs, you don't injure the spindle. The male factor, you have so many technologies, MAC, MC, microfluidics, etc. The embryoscope, obviously, and mix and improved embryo transfer technique. I think all this actually has been projected and said that that is the reason why uh, in ART,
the success rate of endometriosis is actually equivalent to patients without endometriosis. And that has really changed in this one decade. And you must read this paper by Bishop in Fertility Sterility February uh, 21 uh, issue. It's a beautiful article and uh, it gives you very beautifully, you know, I didn't get time to put to put that article, but that's a ESAR level uh, paper, you know, meaning with all the details of the embryology and everything. But actually it makes you understand why ART is better than, you know, natural conception in grade 3, grade 4 endometriosis. So I think <clears throat> if we want to do justice to our patients, <clears throat> We need to think about it. I'm not saying there is an occasional patient which does get pregnant, but what about all those others who don't? So I think I would like to leave you with food for thought about it. So friends, earliest diagnosis is very, very important with suppressive therapy for young adolescents. Cystectomy with gentle handling of the ovaries, minimal cauterization can minimize tissue loss. Role of PRT, suppressive therapy, fertility preservation, Frozen thawed embryo transfer appears to improve pregnancy outcome with GNR channel on and progesterone primed ovarian stimulation may be the way to go in stimulating endometriosis patient. And while coming on the way, I read this beautiful paper by our very own ICMR and uh, Uddhav was on the flight with me and he has contributed to it where utopic endometrium was sent for genetic uh, profiling to ICMR and they found upregulations of some genes in the utopic endometrium, even when endometriosis was not seen. So very soon, forget about surgeons, forget about IVF specialists, we are going to have genetic treatment, genetic modulation, you know, uh, of the treatment, which will actually treat. So in future, I don't know whether obstetricians and gynecologists are going to have a job, but uh, biotechnologists and genetics and maybe computers will take over you know, medicine where you will just go like uh, that minority report. You know, you just walk in and the computer tuck, 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 analyzes you and uh, prints out a report and you get, uh, okay, you have to take this shot and that shot. So friends, enjoy medicine while it exists. We don't know what we're looking at in future. But yeah, it's fantastic. There's a lot of technology uh, advancing and it's exciting to be in there at the moment. And... Uh, Enjoy. Thank you. Thank you.